When you add simple rhythm concepts to your lead playing, it can open up an entire universe of possibilities for yourself as a guitar player. So today I'm gonna to show you an assortment of simple triads that's gonna automatically level up your playing. So we're gonna start on the fifth to seventh fret on the low E string. Then we're gonna do fourth fret, fifth fret, seventh fret on A. And then fourth fret, sixth fret, seventh fret on D. Which by the way, that's our first octave of it. And then we're gonna continue onward, we're gonna play four, six, seven on the G string. And then we're gonna play five, seven on the B string. And then four, five on the high E. So you can hear that second octave, right? So that scale right there is essentially what's gonna hold everything together and it's gonna provide perfect little pathways for us to connect all these little chord shapes that we're gonna be learning, which in these chords are essentially made up of triads mostly. So it's like three note chords that are stacked in thirds, that they contain a root note, a third, and a fifth. Now some of these, I've taken some liberties just for the sake of ease and also to kind of open up some melodic ideas. There are a couple chords in there that aren't, you know, they're not, they're not triads in the sense that they're not roots, uh, thirds, and fifths. Uh, for example, one of them's a power chord, a root fifth octave, but it's gonna prove to be really useful when we're combining these chords along with the major scale. So I've compartmentalized these chords, these triads, in three octaves. We're gonna have low octave, middle octave, and upper octave. And within each octave, there's gonna be three chords, or three triads, right? And they're gonna encompass a one, four, five progression. So in the key of A major, it's gonna be a one chord, which is A, a four chord, which is D, and a five chord, which is E. But they're gonna work beautifully when we weave them in over this whole A major tonality. And by the way, if you take like an A bar chord, right, like this, and essentially break it up into three chunks of three notes at a time, like this, that's kind of the basic framework for these three octaves. We got our low, middle, and upper. And we're gonna combine it with those other chords. So let's start with the lower octave. So our one chord, the A chord, right? It's gonna be this triad right here. Which if you were to take an A bar chord and just remove your first finger, right? And you're left with seventh fret on the A string, seventh fret on the D string, sixth fret on the G string. This is what's known as an A triad in the second inversion, which is basically an A chord just with an E in the bass. So that's our first chord in this lower octave. And then we have our four chord, which is D. Now this one's gonna be a power chord. So with this one, we're starting on the fifth fret of the A string with our first finger, seventh fret on the D and G strings with our third finger and our fourth finger here. And we're playing a root fifth octave. And the reason for this is because if we were to play an actual triad, like a stacked third thing in D, it would look like this. Which is fine, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's all the way over here. I was trying to keep everything relative to this neighborhood, this chunk of the fretboard, for the sake of ease, but it also works out because listen to how nice these two chords sound next to each other. There's some melody going on there, right? Right, as opposed to. And of course that sounds nice too, but what I love about that is you're starting to connect notes in the A major scale. Like, you know? You can get really, really nice sounds from that. So I decided to stick with that idea and leave this as a power chord. So that's our four chord is this D power chord here. And then our five chord, which is E, we're gonna play an E triad, which actually starts on the root note and it looks like this. So this is seventh fret with our pinky on the A string, all right? With our uh, ring finger, we're gonna be on the sixth fret of the D string. With our index finger, we're on the fourth fret of the G string. It's a little bit of a stretcher. It's literally the exact same shape, by the way, if you were to play it in D, it's the same thing. You know? But, when we're combining, you know, the second inversion, A triad, right, which is starting on a fifth, right, and then we have our fourth, uh, our four chord, right, which is that power chord, and then our five chord. It kind of, it, 
it, it like follows that melody, you know, so you can go like. You know, and I just love that. It, it inspire. it's very inspiring musically, you know. So just by messing around with those, you know, those triads. And by the way, right, this is a 1-4-5 progression. So even though we're going to stick to just overall staying within A, because these chords totally work, if we're essentially uh, uh, in the context of A, without making it seem like too much like there's like big chord changes happening. But you can absolutely use them as like an actual 1-4-5 chord progression, you know. You can absolutely do that, right? So that's the those are the low octave triads that we have there, right? And you know, we have that top part of like the, the lower octave of the A major scale. Which all like lie within that same neighborhood. So we can do stuff like I did in the beginning where I went. I love to start a progression on the four. It just feels great because it just resolves so nicely. It's like a nice little delayed gratification to resolving on the one, right? It's real pretty. And again, we're using the A major scale to uh, to weave this together. So we'll get more into the, the mechanics of that. Let, let's finish up on these triads. So next up we have the middle octave triad. So starting with uh, our A triad, I call, like to call this the staircase triad because it literally is kind of what it looks like with your fingers here. So this is our one chord. So it's seventh fret on D, sixth fret on G, fifth fret on B. That's our one chord, right? Our four chord is going to be this. We're literally just barring the seventh fret on the D, G, and B strings. So we have. That's literally going from A to D. So if I were to do it like, let's say, in the open position, you know. Same deal, right? You're getting the same result, and it's much simpler and just narrowed down to those uh, three note components as opposed to playing big full chords, right? And then our five chord right here, which is an E, is going to be E in the first inversion because the low note, the bass note, is the third. So you have like your regular old triad, right? And then you have your first inversion, the first inverting of that regular triad, which means you're starting on the third. Because if you think about the order of notes, root, third, fifth, right? Once you go to that first that first note that, that's in that order, or sorry, that next note in that order, the third, if that's the low note, that makes it a first inversion. And then when you go to the last note, right, which is the fifth, that makes it the second inversion. So there's just two inversions to worry about. You have like your regular old triad, you have your first inversion and your second inversion. So again, just fancy names to just signify what the lowest note of those triads are. So we have this first inversion E triad, which is our five chord here. It's the sixth fret on D, fourth fret on G, fifth fret on B. And there we go, we have our three chords here. And I particularly like to drone the, the A string right here open and going like it works even when I'm playing the D triad and the E one there's some tension but but it works that tension just lends to like making it want to resolve you know so it's a nice little droning note that you can sort of mess around with to get some, again, inspire some musical ideas. And then, of course, we're right here in that kind of middle section of the two octave A major scale, right? You know? Oop, there you go. <laughs> so I'm just kind of messing around, but just to quickly demonstrate before we you know dive deeper into it how just by staying just by virtue of being in the same neighborhood of a, a handful of notes from the a major scale and also being in whatever octave positioning you're in that's what you can keep in mind at least to start out to get you used to this whole this uh, uh, this flow of combining lead concepts and rhythm concepts you know 
just start simple. Just start right within the, you know, like the, the close proximity of the neighborhood that you're in, right? And you're gonna find that you'll get plenty of musical ideas just from that. And it's a perfect starting point. And of course, you can expand outward from there. Oh, and by the way, if you're getting value out of this lesson, do me a favor and hit that like button and consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Really helps us out and it lets us know that you wanna see more lessons just like this one, which we'd be more than happy to give you. So thanks in advance and let's get back to it. Moving on finally to our upper octave triads. We're starting with our one chord, A, which is this. Now this is an A triad in the first inversion because this note is the third. It starts on the third. So this is sixth fret on G, and then first finger is barring the fifth fret on B and high E. And then our D chord is this right here, so we can keep our finger, our first finger barred on that fifth fret there. And then you bring your third finger over to the seventh fret of the G string, and then your pinky over to the seventh fret of the B string, and then D string, uh, sorry, uh, high E string, fifth fret. And you know, again, just like this, right? You're going, it just makes it, it's a nice brighter, kind of chimier sound. That's the cool thing is with playing the same notes but in different octaves, you get a different character of the sound. So it doesn't seem as repetitive, even though you're essentially playing a lot of the same notes. These are essentially a lot of the same notes played in different ways, you know? And then our five chord, it's essentially if you take a D chord shape, right, and bring it up two frets, that's what it is. I like to bar it just because it just keeps it consistent with uh, the pivoting between the other triads. So I like to just bar my first finger across the uh, fourth fret on the, the from the G string down, right? And then your second finger here is gonna play the fifth fret of the B string. So you're playing fourth fret on G, fifth fret on B, and then fourth fret on high E. But it's the same as this. The same as the D chord shape, which, you know, the, the D chord would be right here, two frets down, one, two, right? So that's the five chord triad, right? And that happens to be, that's starting on the fifth. So this right here, E triad in the second inversion, because we're starting on the fifth. Root, third, fifth, there's the fifth. That's the starting note. And right there, you also have, you have the A major scale there. You know, I did a little, uh, you know, a little uh, intentional quoting there. That kind of sounds like, A very, 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 very famous song. Uh, I mean, if you haven't already guessed, Free Fallen by Tom Petty. Sounds a lot like that, right? In terms of the chord changes. Now, it, it, I think the song originally is in the key of E. We're playing in the key of A. But it's just to show you, and that song, I think for the most part, is just, that's how it goes, right? Which is one chord, four chord, four, one, five, Doing the same thing, because we know our one, four, five, right? One, four, four, one, five. <laughs> so this is actually, this is cool. So th this actually segues perfectly into diving into the concept of like, how do we make this musical, right? Once we know how to play it, how do we actually make it musical? It, it's, it's totally permissible when you're practicing this stuff at home to, to kind of quote songs that you really like that let's say use very similar movements in the chord changes, just to give you a starting point, something to work with, you know what I mean? So you don't have to put so much of the pressure on yourself of like, become this creative font of musical ideas. It's like, obviously that's a goal, you want to be able to work towards just being able to just sit and just play guitar, right? Just coming up with cool creative ideas on the fly. But it's totally fine to, to use the songs that you like to give you a little starting point. So if I were to take Free Fallen, for example, is like my inspiration, you know? And if I were to play it in this lower octave, you know? Which kind of matches the timbre a little bit more of the original, you know, playing with like those open chords. So, you know, I, obviously I don't want to stick to it like note for note verbatim, but just to give me an idea, just like, mm, 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 mm. you know, I, so let, what if I were to adapt that even to what I played in the beginning of it? So like, kind of put some more pep in the step as far as the rhythm, right, you know? 
and I, I let in with just literally walking up the major scale until I hit the fourth, right? One, two, three, four, and then filled in that D power chord, right? And then I resolved it quickly because it just felt right, you know? I went from the four chord to the one chord and then added those two notes from the scale. Because the cool thing about those two notes is that they led into this nice little melody. Right? Or. And that's why when I did that E triad, right? I, I barred uh, the fourth fret with my first finger so I can do that little hammer on thing. Just adding some nice little guitar linguistics, you know? And remember how I said you can, you can find that these chords will revolve around, uh, you know, like little melodies, right? So if we were to think of, let's say, the last note of each of these triads, you know? Right there, those last notes. That's pretty. That sounds nice. And it doesn't have to be the last note, it can be the middle note. Let's see what the middle note does, right, if we go. Interesting, so. Oh, sorry. So I, I took the, the shared notes, so I started with the G string, then went up to the D string. Like, what note is shared? This seventh fret here on the D string is shared for both with both of these. That A triad in the second inversion and that D power chord. So we have. Alright, so and then when I went to the the uh, the E chord, flatten the note, right? So and then resolve nicely. That's a nice melody. So we went from, you know, um, This is actually a great glimpse into like chord harmony and stuff, right? Just finding notes within chords and just working with them harmonically, right? So you have like, na, 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 there you go, <laughs> resolve. Or you also have, na, 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 na. oh, sorry, uh, na, 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 na. resolve it, there we go. Which, I mean, if I wanted to stack vocal harmonies or something with that melody, so if I were to isolate those notes, you know. So you can hear the harmony happening, right? Chord harmony, baby. So now let's take a look at the notes on the A string between these tries, see what kind of melody we get there. So we have the one chord, four chord, five, one. So we have, That's nice too. And you can explore this in all of the octaves and it'll start to really get the creative juices flowing, right? And if you were to use, let's say, even just the rhythm from a song you like, and then just find some nice melody based on those shared notes, like, you know, if we were to do middle octave, for example, you know. We're getting the same. And then if we did it in the, on the G string, let's see. Um, oh, we're back to this one. It's real nice. So when we're following that rhythm, that's kind of the, the, the melody that we that we come up with, right? And this applies to the upper octave as well. So once you, uh, I would recommend starting off isolating each octave, like get comfortable with the lower octave, then move on to the middle octave, and then the upper octave as far as pivoting between those triads and then finding those little melodic ideas, those little melodic gold nuggets, you know, and then weaving them together. So what that's like what I like to do is I like to start with a with like a single note, you know, melody, right? As in like one note at a time and then go into a chord, you know. You know? You know, and you can mess around with stuff like again, stick to the stick to the neighborhoods, just like stay close by, and just pick some notes that just work. And you could try something like this, you know. Mm -hmm. 
you'll just kind of eventually get more comfortable with peppering in more and more notes here and there, and then you'll start to navigate the scale in a way that feels more musical, feels more intentional, and less mechanical. And you don't want to just walk up and down the scale hoping to find some ideas, you know, because what that's going to do is it's going to get you too used to hearing an ascending descending pattern of the scale. And you're going to miss out on all the musical content that that scale can give you. All it takes is some intention. So find some notes that sound good, put them to a rhythm and then intend to use them that way. That's how you come up with good melody. So now you have this awesome assortment of triads in three different octaves. And you got this two octave A major scale to weave them all together. Just remember that when you're working out these ideas, just start simple and start slow. Start with each octave individually, and as you get more comfortable with them, start with finding creative ways to weave them all together. Now we've covered a lot of ground in just a single key. All in the key of A we've been able to do this to make it sound beautiful, musical, and very song-like. Now that you're acquainted with this powerful new way of playing in one key, imagine how much damage you're gonna be able to do when you can do it in all the keys. It's actually the perfect next step you can take to expanding across all musical keys, especially when it comes to soloing. And without further ado, here it is. It's a free lesson that's gonna show you how to instantly, and I mean instantly, solo in any key. So we just covered the key of A today, but tomorrow, the world. Just be sure to click here to claim your copy or check the link in the description box. These days when I think about guitar or guitar playing in general, it always relates to how can I make it sound like a song? That's why concepts like these I think are so powerful and can really get you introduced to truly musical song-like playing.